How do I close my next funding round faster? You've just pitched a prospective investor. The meeting went really well. Now the investor tells you they want to move forward towards an investment and give you a term sheet. At the same time, you're almost out of money. So you need to close funding fast. That's what today's video is all about. In today's video, I'll walk you through the five steps you can take to get your funding closed fast. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm Brett. On my channel, I help early stage startup CEOs like you raise money and grow your startup. So if this sounds like you, then hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. Let's start with number one, step number one on our list or our process. Number one, take control of the process. I was ecstatic when we got a term sheet. One of the first people I called was Dave, my mentor and advisor. Dave said, you have to drive the process to close. I was surprised, so I asked him, won't the investors do that? Then Dave said the most important thing of all, you're the only one that will have a sense of urgency and truer words have never been spoken. At the time, it seemed completely backwards. You would think that an investor would want you to get your funding closed as quickly as possible. While that may be true, I've never found that to be the case in all of the deals that I've worked with. Things will drag on unless you push to close quickly. I like to think that every day we didn't close was another day for investors to reconsider their decision. It's becoming more and more common for term sheets not to close. And the longer it takes, the more likely it is not to close. Now, what's quickly? For safes and convertible notes, it's one to two weeks. For an equity round of funding like a Series A, you want to push to close in four weeks or less. So tell investors what you want. They won't be offended. If it's the first of the month when you get a term sheet, then ask for a close on the 29th. Remember, you're the leader of the company. Investors want to see you take charge. It's a positive sign of how you will act as CEO. Next, let's move to number two on our list. Number two, have everything ready to go. You're driving things as a CEO. That's great, but unless you're prepared, the process will drag on. The simple answer is prepare for success in advance. Then you wanna ask your investors for a checklist of items they'll need from you to close, but you wanna be prepared in advance. You'll lose precious time if you're not already prepared. The investor list will likely include the following, detailed financial statements, including your profit and loss, balance sheet, cash flow, stock grant history, and comparable valuations, legal documents, including your articles of incorporation, bylaws, and any legal agreements that define the company's structure and governance, and make sure to include any other legal agreements such as customer contracts and IP assignments and patents. Market information should be there as well including information on the market size, growth trajectory, competitive landscape, and competitive analysis. Your pitch deck cap table should be there as well, including your pitch deck, your co-founder and executive team resumes too, including your resume and voting rights. Next, let's move on to number three on the list. Number three, get your lawyer working with their lawyer. Hopefully, you already have an experienced attorney that's helped closed funding rounds before. If not, you need an attorney in place before you raise funding because you don't want to lose time. The second you get the term sheet, your attorney moves to center stage. Remember, a term sheet is a non-binding document that describes what the closing documents will look like. The closing documents are the true legal documents that describe what the agreement is between you and your investors. 
These documents will likely include preferred stock investment agreements, which are a detailed legal document outlining the specific terms of the preferred stock purchase, including the number of shares, price per share, and any special rights associated with the preferred stock. The second thing is an amended and restated certificate of incorporation, a document that reflects changes to the company's legal structure, such as the issuance of new preferred stock and any adjustments to voting rights. The third thing is Investors' Rights Agreements, an IRA, that defines the specific rights and privileges granted to investors, including access to financial information, voting rights, and the ability to participate in future fundraising rounds. The fourth thing is a disclosure schedule, including a document that provides further details regarding the company's financial situation and operations. The fifth thing is a voting agreement of how investors will vote on certain company matters, especially when there are multiple investors with significant ownership. Let's move on to number four on our list. Number four, over-communicate. <laughs> there is no such thing as communicating too little when you're doing a big business deal, such as closing a round of funding. You and your attorney should agree on a schedule to close when you want to close. Use the basic management technique of who will do what by when. Have one owner, one owner for each action on the list. Then have a specific date the action will be completed by. Publish the schedule and send it to all the stakeholders. Think of yourself as the project manager. Your lawyer may be doing the heavy lifting, but you're the one, you're really the one, that's going to keep everything on schedule. Micromanagement may be a dirty word, but in this case, it's absolutely necessary if you're going to get done on time. Literally, make sure every day that everything is on schedule. Do damage control if something is in danger of slipping. This leads to my final point, number five on the list. Number five, address any concerns quickly. There will be a problem that comes up, I guarantee it. The problems can be small or big. For example, there was an issue with patents that had been previously issued to me that one of our investors felt should be the company's IP. It was an innocent mistake on my part, but that didn't matter. If I didn't fix the problem, it could become a bigger problem. The point is, you want to put out the fire before anything becomes a problem that can cost you more time. That focus in micromanagement will keep you on schedule or ahead of schedule. Now, if this content is resonating with you, then please hit the like button right now. One final thought. You're the point person for the team. Just like you're managing the outbound relationship with your attorney and your investors, you're doing the same thing with your co-founders. You'll have to keep them up to date and you'll have to answer any questions and concerns they have throughout the process. Now, what did you learn from today's video? Put your answer in the comments column below today's video. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments column too, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Now, I have one more thing for you today. It's my free startup pitch deck template. Actually, two more things. This is the first one. And my startup template has all the slides you need to develop an awesome pitch deck. Click the link below today's video, and it's yours for free. And here's the second thing. <laughs> if you haven't already, join my free group of startup CEOs Zero to Pitch. It is a community for startup CEOs focusing on growing their early stage startups and startup CEOs raising money for their early stage startups. Click the link below this video to join. Finally, click the subscribe button to get notified every time I release a new video. I'm Brett at brettjfox.com. Thanks for watching today. Take care. Bye.